Give me a second. Okay. It's, been, it's been a while. <laughs> you got it. Okay. <laughs> and we're bringing you guys Friday Farmer Day in conjunction with Organic Gardening Magazine. We're at City Farmers Nursery in San Diego, California with my main man, Kirk Hensler of Hale Holistic. We're gonna show you guys how you can grow your own food right there at home, be totally self-sufficient, self-sustainable. It is on and straight up popping. Kirk, what are we looking for? Cool, today we're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna grab everything we need to make our own home garden box. We'll do raised bed, reclaim redwood. We're gonna get the soil, organic topsoil compost. We're gonna get the nutrients, some nice organic fertilizer, and then we're gonna get the seed because we're gonna start from seed and show you how easy it is to sprout something into a plant that you can harvest for your enjoyment. And we're also gonna meet the main, main man, Mr. Bill inside. He runs this whole place. He's got a brain full of knowledge on how to help you guys grow your own stuff. So we're gonna go, go inside and meet Bill first. Check it out. All right, guys, I want to introduce you to Bill, who runs the whole show here. Bill, we've got 40,000 subscribers in YouTube land. We want to show them how they can grow their own food. Like, should we be looking for boxes, specific type of boxes, specific type of soil that you have here? What, what, what do we need? Well, growing plant material, it all starts with the soil, good quality soil. Um, I would stay off the internet because there's way too much information because gardening is very simple. Um, using everything organically, growing in season, but then realizing that what you grow is for that season and certain things aren't just available and so you have to do without them until the season comes around. Uh, the more larger the containers are, the more you'll be able to grow. And for the most part, vegetables only need about 12 inches of soil in order to do well. Okay, your soil is probably your most important parts of your garden. You want to have a soil that's got at least 30% organic material in it, and you want to get the soil at least pH neutral. pH means what is either it's acid or alkaline. Most plants will take up most of their food under a neutral soil condition. The soil that we sell is actually 30% wood shavings, which are organically nitrilized. Sand that's been mined out of a uh, out of a pit, so it's not a river bottom sand, so there's no diseases in. And the soil is also that's been mined, so that way it's free and clear of weeds and diseases. Uh, it's pH neutral. It's organic. So we're sure that there's no contamination with it. This mixture is great. The only thing it's lacking is a fertilizer. Okay, fertilizer is ba basically the plant food or the, what the plant needs to survive. And although a lot of soils are really good for plants and water and sunlight, most of them are lacking in what the plant actually needs to produce itself. If you stick with organic fertilizers and regular fertilizers as well, the important thing is to know what the numbers are on it. Really, really important. Okay, on all your fertilizers, there's three numbers listed on all the containers at all times. The first number is nitrogen. That produces green growth. So if you're going basil or lettuce, you want that number to be bigger than the other numbers. Second number being phosphorus produces fruit and flowers. So you want that one to be a little bigger than the others when you're in the flowering or, or, or fruit production stage. And the third number is potassium. That's for root development. So if you're growing potatoes or something that you were to harvest a tuber from, like carrots and radishes, this would beef up the size of your production that way. You know. So plants need a combination of these, and those are the major ingredients. There's a lot of minor ingredients that aren't listed, but when you buy a fertilizer and you see those numbers, that is what the minimum amount of fertilizer that's in, or nutrient for the plant that's in the Okay, box. so at the nursery, we provided a little bit of a cheat sheet for our area here, um, and it has this vegetables for spring and summer, and we have the vegetables for fall, winter, and spring. Now this is a rule of thumb, which means not everything's listed here. And you do have microclimates, so sometimes microclimates will differ. But for the most part, a lot of your vegetables like radishes and carrots and root crops can be grown both times of the year. There are some people that are afraid of starting from seed, and that's okay. Uh, the rule of thumb of a seed to be successful is never plant it more than twice its width. And some people have a habit of planting them too deep, then they don't make it above the surface of the ground. For instance, we... Okay guys, we got our box stuff, we got our fertilizer, we got our soil. We gotta figure out what we're gonna grow here. What are we growing? We got seeds here. What seeds should we use? Okay, as the list showed you, you want to plant for the season. A lot of times you'll go in a seed rack and we, we carry all organic seeds, but you go in the seed rack, you'll see many different seeds. 
You want to know what to buy because this is seeds generally for all year. Kirk, you want to grow some greens or what? Oh, well, I want to get a juicer, so I want to do some juicing, man. So I think um, I've always had success growing chard year round, so I think um, some chard would be good for the greens. So you said chard, spinach, squash, tomato, pepper. Maybe pepper. Wouldn't Maybe you? pepper. Maybe pepper. He's not sure. <laughs> All right, so so let's grab them. Let's grab them. Where, where are we at? Okay, here? so we got, um, well, on the chard and stuff, you're going to want to grow a lot of it, right? And you'll probably repeat it throughout this year, so we should get chard by the shot class full. Okay. Now, and if you want to go ahead and the, the spinach too. So the other thing would be to pick out your, your pepper or your tomato and your squash out there. So really everything you're going to be growing, you'll be growing from seed and you should get the shot glass full because there's quite a few seed in there. All right. So okay, let's do it then. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Let's do it. So we're going to go ahead and get uh, Swiss chard. And we're going to get this and we're going to get a shot glass. Grab a shot glass. Shot glass right here? Okay. I like shot glasses. <laughs> I like shot glasses filled with seeds. <laughs> All right, well, so we've got our seeds, our spinach, and our chard. Okay. Now the important thing is in assembling this whole thing. Okay. Let's go on outside, and we'll try to talk how to assemble it all. All right. I'm absolutely fired up right now. Looks like we have everything we need. Reclaimed redwood box. Fertilizer, soil, starter plants, seeds. We've got something else over here, Bill. Tell us about this. Okay, this is a, a weed fabric, and basically it's used a little bit different here. This is what you, you go ahead and after you build your box, you'll go ahead and put this at the bottom of the box and nail it to the side so it acts as a barrier to prevent the, the soil from sl slipping out the bottom. If you're on concrete, and you don't want it to stain, you could put a plastic sheet underneath it so that way at, as time goes on it won't stain the concrete. So you're going to build your box, you're going to line it with the weave fabric, then you're going to go fill it with your soil. And you want to fill it kind of high because soil will settle, so don't worry about it being too close to the top of the box. After that, we have the fertilizer down on the bottom there, and it'll have a directions on how to put it in as a pre-plant fertilizer which means you'll add some fertilizer to the soil so when the plants start growing, they'll have something to feed on automatically. Generally in organics, you'll use it about once a month. And you always, when you re-fertilize, never fertilize dry soil. Always make sure you water first, fertilize, and water again. And that's healthy for the plants. We'll show you guys that. Right. And also, you want to go ahead and when you plant your plants, sometimes you'll get them and the roots will be tight around the plant. We have a new way of selling plants now. We sell them without containers. It's called Dig Your Own. So you go ahead and take it and take it home in a paper bag, which is recyclable, but also we're cutting down on the use of plastic. So when you get this home, you will loosen the roots with your hand and go ahead and plant it in the soil. And you can plant tomatoes a little deep. They're one of the few plants you can, because if you do, the roots will come out the sides. But for most of your plants, you want your soil level in your container being the exact same level as the top of the root ball. So, and then give them a good drink of water and then keep an eye on them. The plants will tell you if they need something or not. The best thing about watering a garden is to hand water it so that we're out watching the growth, pulling any weeds that might happen, and also keeping an eye on bugs. If you do get any insects, please come in and identify the bug or bring it in and have a nursery identify it so that way they can give you the proper organic solution. The organic solution sometime will mean just go ahead in the morning and wash it off with a hose. You know, that's as simple as that. Awesome. Thanks so much, Bill. We're going to pay for this. We're going to load it up and it's on and popping. And real quick, we're going to have eight, what do you call it, bags of soil. We have two right here, but we're actually going to be using eight. Well, what, what's the rule? A bag per cubic? Uh, about one bag of topsoil, this one in particular, per cubic foot right. of space. I just learned that. I remember that. What, you, what you really want to do is take the length and width and depth of your, your box, hopefully in feet. You multiply the three together, and that will give you how many cubic feet. Then when you go to the garden center and get the soil, you'll ask them how many cubic feet are in the bag, and that way you'll figure out how many bags you're going to need. Make sure it's good dirt. Make sure it's not just a bunch of filler and compost. You want to have a good soil because your plant success is determined by the quality of your soil. Sweet, guys. Tune in next week. We're going to put this thing together. You can put yours together. It's on. It's popping. We're growing our own. We're out of here, guys. Peace. Peace.